Thanks, Alex. Uh, first, I'd like to uh, thank thank uh, the company Biologists and Development for inviting me to give a talk on my work on uh, Siona heart regeneration. So the adult human heart is a notoriously regeneration incompetent organ. And this uh, results in results in car cardiac disease basically is the number one killer in the world. So there's uh, an intense effort to understand what in you know, understanding on how to regenerate the heart so which so there, and in the past 20 years there's been a number of model systems that have been shown to be able to regenerate their heart after damage such as a uh, zebrafish which can regenerate its heart throughout its entire lifespan as well as neonatal, neonatal mice however with with the neonatal mice they only are able to regenerate their heart within a very within a few days Within a few days, they exhibit our age-dependent generative decline in regenerative capacity. So, and uh, there's been intense interest in understanding age-dependent regenerative declines in a number of species. And, however, I would make the argument that there has been probably a bias towards this decline, and this this bias also this bias into the decline of generative capacity also is seen in the evolutionary scale where we see, we really only understand a lot of how we lose regeneration. However, we don't really understand how we obtain regeneration in the first place, how we develop it and how we obtain it over the course of evolution. So the heart, so this is, so vertebrate heart regeneration is a cool system where it is completely stem cell independent, where they, instead of using resonant stem cells, they use, um, uh, they de-differentiate pre-existing cardiomyocytes, which then go proliferation and then restore, undergo proliferate and then restore the missing structure. And uh, however, there is a, there is a, there is a limit to this where if you damage the heart enough that it will eventually not be able to regenerate. So there is, at least in these situations, there's no real evidence for the normal, the noble formation of uh, cardiomyocytes, and uh, possibly no heart alternative cell sources. So I am broadly speaking interested in the origins of regeneration. Such questions include uh, how does how did the heart regeneration evolve in the first place? Did it originate in the vertebrates, or did it occur earlier along the line? I'm also, and uh, I'm also interested in how, understanding how the heart acquires regenerative capacity during development, and then also understanding whether the cellular source is contributing to regenerating. So what animal model could this could I use to understand to address these questions? This brings me to Siona, my favorite model organism. So Siona is a tunicate and therefore a chordate, and in fact is the like these uh, tunicates are the closest relatives to vertebrates. And uh, they undergo an invariant development where they, invariant development, they eventually become a chordate like tadpole. This tadpole event then settles and undergoes metamorphosis to become the sessile adult. And importantly, this Siona is a powerful model that it has a lot of uh, molecular tools available to it. And you, and you can easily just manipulate them simply by electroporating transgenes. So, Basically, any sort of genetic, genetic manipulation is possible. So, uh, Siona and Ascidians uh, in general are uh, have this quirk in development where they are very invariantly developing, and this is called mosaic development, where they where every cell is important, and in fact, if you ablate an individual blastomere, you will lose that lineage that blastomere is supposed to cut. And this is in direct opposition to um, regulated development, where if you ablate a cell, these lineages can be regenerated. So Siona, so Siona is a regeneration incompetent embryo. And this has been shown, this has been known for over a hundred years by Ed Conklin and Chabry and others. Despite this invariant development, Siona actually is able to regenerate a number of structures as adults. So they gain regenerative capacity over development. So they are able to regenerate structures such as its siphons, as well as its entire brain. And you can even cut them in half. And the, uh, 
the proximal structures will regenerate the distal half. And the, however, the distal half is not able to regenerate proximal structures. And the, these proximal structures include organs such as the intestine and the heart. So over the past, over, over 100 years, it has been assumed that Siona cannot regenerate its heart. However, there are a number of uh, pieces of evidence that suggest, suggest that it might actually be possible. For example, the Siona has a conserved uh, heart developmental program, albeit simplified. It has a uh, mononuclear diploid cardiomyocytes, which has been shown to be important for regenerative species. And they are also able to survive without a heart in their early stages of juvenile development. When you knock down a MSP, they, it is able to, these animals do not have a heart, and but they are able to survive for about a week. So this opens up the possibility that they actually can regenerate. So I wanted to readdress this question, can the Siena heart regenerate? So uh, to do this, I adopted the, uh, the, N the NTR MTZ system to specifically ablate the heart. And uh, this is the NTR system where you are expressing NTR under a tissue specific promoter such as MSP, where it is normally just an inert transgene. It doesn't really do anything unless you supply a prodrug such as metronidazole, which then the cell, the NTR converts it to a toxic byproduct, and this, then this cell autonomously kills the cells. So I cloned this under the MSP promoter, and I wanted to see if they, this actually works in Siena. So this is my general experimental design that I'll, that I'll be talking about for the rest of this talk. Basically, I electroprate the NTR transgene into uh, fertilized zygotes and then allow them to develop a metamorphose by three days after fertilization. I treat them with MTZ or DMSO as a control. And then I wash out the drug and I'll allow them to recover. And uh, I denote recovery period by uh, this R the, by saying they recover for 48, for example, 40 hours. So R72 is it's going to be 72 hours after drug washout. So first, I wanted to see if MTZ worked. So I performed, I treated the animals with MTZ for 24 hours, and then I stained them for uh, tunnel labeling. And I found that indeed that within the NTR domain that they robustly are, are dying, robustly dying after, after MTZ treatment. And uh, I found a quirk that within most of these hearts are almost entirely ablated or even completely ablated in some of them. So this led to the question, can they regenerate their heart after these, this massive amount of damage? And uh, short story, yes, they can. So using these two uh, independent uh, ways to visualize a heart, one is using a stable transgenic line expressing TNI GFP, which is expressed in all the muscle cells, including the heart. And I also stain for the MF20, which it labels car cardiac myosin heavy chain, and it labels the, my the cardiomyocytes. And uh, as you see here in the DMSO treated animals, they are, the hearts are fine and normal looking. However, 24 hours after MTZ treatment, the hearts are collapsing each other on themselves, and there's very few cardiomyocytes remaining, if any. And however, looking three to four days later, I find that the heart grows back, and uh, the uh, apoptotic debris has become eventually cleared, and are being cleared, as you can see here. So yes, the heart indeed can regenerate. And I can even look at these animals longitudinally uh, just looking at them live, and uh, the same animal live, and I indeed can see that they are able to regenerate. And you can even look at um, heartbeat as a functional recovery metric, and they are able to recover, are able to obtain, reattain heartbeat after a few days. So I then wanted to understand the mechanisms of how regeneration works in Siona. So as I mentioned previously, uh, vertebrae hearts regenerate by a proliferation of pre-existing cardiomyocytes. Does this also occur in Siona? So looking at the phosphohistone H3, which marks mitotic cells throughout regeneration and development, I found that indeed that there is an increase of in proliferation by around 48 hours after damage to a button, and this is sustained for, for up till 96. 
So indeed, they are able to proliferate. And uh, do they do these regenerate by a pre-existing cardiomyocytes? So looking at the uh, long-lived flesh and protein stay gold, I find that in hearts that are partially ablated, that they indeed are able to, uh, I, I do indeed have a con contribution from the pre-existing cardiomyocytes. I then wanted to understand what signaling mechanisms could be involved. I looked at a number of signaling pathways, but here I'm going to show you uh, the, SMAT, the, the BMP signaling pathway, where I'd indeed, looking at phosphosmed, I found that phosphosmed staining is uh, upregulated in the in the regenerating hearts. And um, and it, it doesn't inquire, require BMP signaling because when I treat with dorsal morphin, it inhibits regeneration. So this brings me to the first to, to the first uh, conclusion of my talk, where where previously it was assumed that only vertebrates could regenerate the heart. However, we thought this discovery in Siona brings back the origin of heart regeneration to the split between the the olfactor lineage, which includes tunicates and vertebrates. So the next question I want to ask is when does Siona acquire regenerative confidence? So, so I to to determine when when um, regeneration is acquired during development, I ablated the animals every twenty four hours during metamorphosis, and uh, and I'd, I'd test want to see which 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 stages are able to regenerate, which stages are not, and, and I found that treating animals from 24 to 48 HBF, which is the early phases of metamorphosis, they are completely unable to regenerate. However, during the later stages, such as 48 and 72 HBF, they are actually able to regenerate. And this actually positively correlates with, with the maturation of the heart. So I then wanted to understand what mechanisms, what could be happening here. So this brought me to a candidate approach. So I found that, uh, I knew that YAP is able to uh, reprogram uh, adult cardiomyocytes to a more regenerative phenotype in uh, mice. And I wanted to see if uh, if this is also happening in, in Siona. So looking at in C2s for YAP1, I found that there is a pulse of YAP1 expression that peaks at around 72 hours post fertilization, which is around the time of the regenerative transition. So then this made, this made me ask, a, quite a, wanted to do a crazy experiment. Can I force, can I force regeneration to become, force earlier animals to become regenerated confident earlier by overexpressing YAP? And when I did this, I do find that YAP overexpression is able to give a partial regenerative response during, when I ablate during the regeneration incompetent period. So then I wanted to I wanted to do the converse experiment where I inhibit YAP and see if that is required for regeneration. It, er, inhibit YAP early to see if that is required for regeneration. So I did this by overexpressing MSD12, which is the homologa hippo, and it and MSD2 inhibits YAP phosphorylation by a LATS12. So when I overexpress MSD12 in the in embryos, I find that these these animals are unable to regenerate even in the regeneration competent periods. So the final question, the uh, final part of this talk, is, so I want to understand uh, what happens when the entire heart is ablated. So when the partial heart is when the when the heart is partially ablated, we obviously get cardiomyocytes, pre-existing cardiomyocytes are replenishing the heart. However, when you have no cardiomyocytes where are they coming from? And the, this suggests that there is an alternative lineage that could be affecting, contributing to regeneration. So the first thing that a Siona person would ask is, uh, could it be the PV positive cells that have been shown in other systems to be important for regeneration? However, I found no evidence for these PV positive cells contributing to basically anything. So it can't be these. So I did have a clue which which would I did have a clue where where they um I found that there is some TNI GFP expressing some um, gut cells that 
maybe I'll ask a question. Could the endoderm could the endoderm be contributing to regeneration? Been contributing to chymerocytes. So to do this, to test this, I expressed uh, stay gold under the control of uh, NKX 2.1, which is expressed in all endoderm, the pan endoderm. And uh, I found that in a minority of cases that I indeed find a endoderm to caramycite conversion, as you can see here, over here. And uh, I also confirmed this by using chide based photoconversion, where, and this is, as you can see here, that these chide red positive cells can, indeed are contributing to the regenerating heart. So then I wanted to see, I wanted to further un understand what could be, which which one of the endodermal cell type could be contributing. So we don't really have the enhancers for specific endodermal lineages yet, but I do have this drug called dextran sodium sulfate, which specifically damages the gut. And um, and I found that treating with dextran sodium sulfate during regeneration completely inhibits regeneration. It suggests that the gut might be contributing, it's probably can be contributing to regeneration in some way. So this is what I have. So I have doffed the NTR system to in Siona. Siona can regenerate, and much like vertebrates, and it, its mosaic to regenerative transition is somewhere between 48 and 72 HBF, which is latent metamorphosis. And YAP1 is important for this transition. And then there's an emergency cell population in endoderm that may be allowed to for the heart to regenerate when the entire heart is ablated. So I would like this, that's it. So I'd like to thank uh, Lionel for, for allowing me to do this project and uh, thank uh, Alex for chairing the session and I'd love to take everyone's questions. Wonderful, thank you very much. I think that's a really great way to highlight how studying diverse organisms is really crucial for us to understand development and regeneration. We already have a question in the chat. In the chat. John Pugh asks, are all cardiomyocytes capable of de-differentiation to produce regeneration? Or is it only a subset of them capable of behaving in this way? I guess it's in mammalian systems. Well, all the cardiomyocytes are mononuclear. So they are, they're all diploids. So theoretically, all cardiomyocytes could be contributing. I don't think there's like a, a specific subset of cardiomyocytes within the heart because there's so few cardiomyocytes in general. So I think any cardiomyocyte could potentially do it. Thank you. I have a question about the heart during metamorphosis. To what extent is there sort of changeover in cells within the organ? Are they really just maturation of the existing larval cells or are they replaced by other cells during metamorphosis? So they are, so, so the heart is actively dividing during metamorphosis. So, and uh, cardiomyocyte, like the cardiomyocytes are derived from these, um, from these cardiomyocytes. So they sure. just kind of start grow. They just continue to grow. Okay. Bigger. We have had time for a couple more questions if anyone has any. Um, in the meantime, I'll ask a question, a very general question about the evolution of the heart and what stage do we see what we now consider our heart to evolve during the phylogenetic tree? So in chordates, the it's actually in tunicates where we first see a heart actually. Right. A, a true heart actually, actually there. there. In a, in, in a, like cephalochordates, such as ampioxus, they don't have a heart. They have they have these um uh, they have vessels like they have these blood vessels, but they're not like they're not endothelium, mm -hmm. and uh, they they do have contractile properties. They have these myoepithelial cells, which are probably the precursors to what what heart would be. Sure, and I'm sorry if I missed this, but do they do Siona have a, a closed circulatory system? That is up to debate. Okay. So. They, so it has been traditionally considered to be an open system. Mm -hmm. However, there, like from our lab, we we found that there is, is evidence that it could be at least partially closed, but that's mm -hmm. still, that's still under active investigation. Right. Thank you very much. If there are no further questions, oh no, there is a question just in time. Um, Natasha asks if you cut the Siona in half and it's missing the, the, the brain, I guess, in the, the earlier structure, it regenerates. Is there any input from the nervous system to heart function, or is it cell autonomous? That's another thing that we really don't understand, whether it is cell autonomous or a neural input. Mm -hmm. 
So that's also, I think some, some, some people are trying to investigate that. There are neurons that are, that do touch the heart, but we don't know if we don't know the cellular identity of the pacemaker. Okay. Thank you very much.